I resolve, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, that the uh, closed meeting be called to an end so that we may return to the regular meeting of Council, seconded by Councillor Zant. All those in favor, thank you then. Let's go on now to the to announcements. Do any of you have any announcements? I can certainly make an announcement if you allow me to, Mr. Mayor. Uh, firefighters are fighting, um, or, or should I say, are selling Committee and Cancer Foundation um, uh, necklaces, basically. They're eight dollars per necklace, and uh, firefighters will be wearing um, pink shoulder pads or epaulettes, if you wish, and they'll be selling uh, those necklaces at eight dollars a piece. Uh, but Richard, your club is also holding a fundraising uh, supper this coming Saturday, if those of you are interested. All right, let's go on to question period. If any of you have any questions or a presentation to make to Council, please step up front. Give us your name and your address. Good evening, Mr. Lacasse. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martin Lacasse. I live at 2825 Valerie Place in Rockland. So I'm before Council tonight to ask if it would be possible to reconsider the decision that you took a couple of weeks ago at Council. The uh, Unfortunately, uh, the uh, uh, Archery Club lost its venue because of the installation of a cushion floor in the original venue. And unfortunately, uh, the administrators there decided not to have us conduct uh, archery activities inside the building as well as ball hockey that was restricted or forbidden in the gymnasium. So we have difficulty in coming up with a practice area. Our club was founded in the beginning of the 1980s. We're not a rich club. We're a non-profit organization. There are many families that uh, that practice archery along with us. There are children uh, four to five years old, accompanied by parents that take part in our activities, r ranging from that age group to the 80s, really. It's a, an inexpensive sport as compared to other sports, and those individuals that are not all that rich can have uh, proper equipment and uh, practice archery with us. So we were in Saint we were established at the St. Trinité School beforehand, but now we're we don't have any venues to conduct our activities. I'm wondering then if Council could allow us uh, to practice our activities at the uh, Jamac Lalonde Arena instead of $45 per hour, maybe $45 per evening, Mr. Mayor. Of course, the Jamac Lalonde uh, Arena would be a great spot to conduct our activities in. As things stand, there are many evenings that have been freed up at that particular arena that are not busy, the municipality could certainly uh, uh, reap uh, some financial rewards instead of not uh, having any money from uh, those free nights. It's unfortunate for us if we'd be called upon to move our activities elsewhere. Any other questions? How many members do you have in your archery club? Well, this year we're hovering in the vicinity of a hundred members. Many families from the younger from young tots and teenagers after they've reached the teenage age we lose them lose them for a tad bit I don't know what happens and then we recuperate them later or recoup them afterwards I've seen uh, what they do they have sort of like cut out animal forms and they they practice archery on those cut out forms and last year I believe you had an event yes indeed Mr. Mayor at the Lescal School, 140 archers from Quebec and Ontario attended this archery contest we had. Uh, how many hours do you conduct your activities per, on a weekly basis? Well, two hours per week. As was our practice in St. Trinité, we were there at 6.30 in the uh, p.m. and we left at 8.30 at night. And do members pay a membership uh, due? Yes, they pay their membership card for the year. Uh, we have a monthly rate for families, of course. I believe it's a little bit under $100 per year, but the club still functions on a non-profit basis because we have to uh, 
renew our targets uh, and our carpets when we either purchase uh, foam constructed animals uh, and host tournaments. So per evening it would cost you under a hundred dollars for the rental of the hall. Well we're talking about two hours that would be ninety dollars plus taxes but the club as things stand right now the uh, our money base is uh, well beforehand we were paying three hundred dollars for the year well I understand but you have to consider the other sports that are conducted there as well as uh, hockey activities that are conducted with all family members uh, it's an expensive uh, sport. We'd also re received a request f from a Zumba club. Yeah, but that was not a non-profit organization. I believe, sir, that uh, we were not aware if your organization was a non-profit or not. Right. You know, if we do open up the arena, we have to pay an employee to open up the arena. So we want to offer the services, but I'd be... Uh, well, Councillor Chouinet, isn't there a reduced fee for nonprofit organizations? Well, normally, yes, it's sixty to sixty-five dollars. But for other nonprofit organizations, normally we're talking about forty-five dollars per. Uh, well, already it's already we're already can, uh, working with a reduced fee. That's why we establish specific fees for nonprofit organizations. If you div divide that by those people there, well, you know, you're talking about $5 maybe per night per child, which is even less expensive than having children being babysit. So $5 for two hours worth of use of the Jean-Marc Lalonde Arena is not much expensive. Not very much expensive. Well, we can bring it back in November. Mr. Lalonde, well, Mr. Mayor... I do sympathize uh, with this particular plight. If we try, of course, to uh, host every uh, possible activity that goes in within, goes on within our municipality, the only thing is that when Pierre's team comes up with uh, decisions um, on behalf of town council, we have to base ourselves on rates that are charged back to other associations, as Mrs. Chouanian was alluding to. If we make an exception for you, sir, well, at the next meeting, there'll be another group coming up and say, well, look, we, you gave a rebate to such an individual or such a group, so we also want that particular rebate or savings. So uh, the budget uh, becomes unmanageable for the city of Clarence and Rockland, and we're working then under, uh, you know, monetary constraints, and it becomes a rebate on top of, re, uh, of another rebate situation. Sir, what is our approximate uh, cost when we open up the arena? Well, I didn't calculate the exact cost uh, that we'd have to pay to open up the arena. I can. Uh, are they paid the minimum salary or $20 per hour? Uh, no, I believe it's a minimum of $15 per hour. Well, last time that I was there, let's say we have a part-time individual that uh, opens up uh, establishments, uh, and opens up uh, uh, places and venues like this. Is he paid the, the minimum salary? No, no, he's paid more than that. I can come up with the figures at the, our next meeting, but let's not forget this one thing. If we make an exception for this group, this exception will open up the door for a whole other bunch of groups if I can be allowed to make this comment last year uh, you uh, had offered two or three free months uh, of use but then they were called upon to pay the regular fee after that once uh, you know you told that group that you know they got their act together basically uh, and um, started working on its own, then that's fine. You suspended fees until then. Would everyone be in favor of this? Well, the other group was a startup group. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen, if uh, their activity was going to be popular or not, if it was going to be f economically feasible or not. But in the in the case of the archery club, they're already functional. They're able to come up with a budget to fit their needs. Councillor Lalonde, well, I'm in agreement with Councillor Grimaud that it be brought back to our next uh, meeting and obtain further information from the municipality. 
Fine. Well, thank you, Mr. Nagas. Consent items? Oh, you, we had someone else then. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have questions for those people living on Ramage Road, on the south side of the road, and not on the north side. That small row of houses there. There are a lot of complaints, Mr. Mayor, with regards to cars traveling at high speeds. Mr. Bouchard? <laughs> Mayors of all municipalities spoke about the same thing. It's the same problem that prevails for everyone, save and except that the situation that different that's different in other roads is that there's no signage that says that there's 40 kilometers an hour. In keeping with the law, when there's no signage up there, it's 50 kilometers per hour. But what a residents group was saying, as well as a local police officer was saying it was that there was there were a lot of snowmobiles going by there if we had signage put up it might make people more aware of well when the budget will be drawn up on the 1st of December we might recommend putting up signage on Ramage Road but that has to be considered by the next council yes thank you Mr. Bouchard 50 kilometers Mr. Mayor isn't that just within village limits or well anywhere in rural areas where there's no signage the 50 kilometer an hour prevails. That doesn't make sense on Bouvier Road. Just say that to all those who received fines traveling on Juquette Road, my son included. But that doesn't make sense. We're talking about country roads. Well, I said, uh, well, I'll just reiterate what was told to me many years ago. The law is the law. But, Mr. Mayor, I don't think that makes much sense. And it you don't most of our roads are have signage that states 50 kilometers an hour well that's the law that we've adopted but i don't know that the law prescribes that you can travel at 50 kilometers an hour either at lenas or in castleman they travel at a faster hold on there one at a time item nine if uh, mrs uh, choignet wants uh, town council to come up with a, a, a separate item then we're fine we can commission a study because I don't think we'll, this uh, discussion will have no end if we enter into this. You've had your turn at bat, Mrs. Chouinard. Let's go on, shall we? Yes, yes, that's fine, Mr. Mayor. That's fine. Fine, then. Let's go on now to consent items. Yes. Concerning the ar archery club uh, letter, what... What will be the reply? I believe Mr. Boucher, Boucher noted down that uh, this will certainly um, be dealt with in November. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to withdraw item 10.3 sub B. Anything else? Fine then. Councillor Levert, go ahead. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved, Mr. Oh, hold on there, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved, Mr. Mayor, that the following items as identified under consent items appearing on the regular meeting of council agenda be adopted. Item 10.1, adoption of the minutes of the following meetings. Sub A, a regular meeting of September the 24th, 2018, and Sub B, minutes of the Committee of the Whole, meeting of September 24th, 2018, item 10.2, receipt of the minutes of the following meetings, Sub A, Library Board of June the 12th, and B, Committee of Adjustment minute, Minutes, August the 22nd, 10.3, Sub A, the following recommendations from the Committee of the Whole of September 24, 2018, Sub A, Resolution to mandate the Infrastructure and Planning Department to bring a forward or to bring forward the Zoning Bylaw Amendment to reduce the height of an accessory building in residential zones, and 10.3 Sub C, Resolution to reduce or to refuse or to re reduce the engineering fees for the Rockland District High School, and Sub D, Resolution to proceed with a detailed and in-depth investigation to decide which servicing alternative would be the most efficient and cost-effective to sustain growth within the village boundaries. Item 10.4, resolution to support the Township of Amaranth regarding the NAFTA Dairy Supply Management. And item 10.5, resolution to adopt the tax reduction under Section 357 and 358 of the Municipal Act. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I just have like to make one 
comment with regards to the NAFTA resolution for item 10.4. It's unfortunate that uh, agriculture was sacrificed at the altar by our government to uh, please our ignorant uh, president to the south. And I hope that the milk sent from the United States is properly identified as American milk and not mixed up with our milk because the American milk contains hormones hormones that are prohibited in milk here in Canada. That's all I had to say. Seconded. All those in favor then? Carried. Councillor Lalonde, go ahead. Um, uh, whereas a town administrator met the developer and its consultants and whereas the developer supplied a, an analysis that supports the conception and re meets all departments uh, requirements be it resolved that council adopts the design scenario pre presented by the post-development emergency overland flow route analysis from McIntosh Perry dated September the 14th 2018 as recommended in report I and F 2018-042 I'm going to second uh, this motion any questions uh, Mr. Lalonde yes Mr. Mayor I know that at the very beginning our Rose Department did not acquiesce uh, to this design scenario and I take a look at the uh, drainage of that particular property that drains onto the east side if we rely on the plans. Now we're only talking about drainage here are we and not the rest of the subdivision as it stands Mr. Lennart? Well Mr. Mayor when we had occasion to meet the developer and its engineers, we had we told them that they had to meet all requirements set out in keeping with the emergency flow route. So the neighboring lands located north and south of there that had to meet with uh, drainage uh, restrictions had to resort to the necessary modifications. The only th uh, place where they could not do so would be to the east at the uh, in the Gulf Road along the Gulf area so given the property they'll develop and given the control they'll be exercising upon all development in that area the drainage is going to be reduced or the drainage flow is going to be re reduced and the administration is comfortable with the impact and the risk factor associated with this. Well there's no retention basin in that area. Well Mr. Mayor there's no classic retention basis in the classic sense of the word but these uh, were working here with oversized piping that will ensure proper drainage in that area. When you take a look at the floods that occur here, there, and everywhere, especially since uh, 2016, if I take a look at what's happening, it's draining onto the other side. Are we going to then it, make use of the Saint Jean Basin? at the end of Saint Joseph. Well, the report refers to a basin. Where is it? Well, we're talking about oversized piping here, uh, Mr. Councillor. The it's about 5 or 6 times the 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 size of an of a regular pipe. So, all water over and above what the Ministry of the Environment and the City requires will be controlled on site on the land itself. The emergency flow design, if ever something dire occurs, uh, has ensured that water will flow towards the Gulf Course area and the flow of water will be smaller 
in dimension or smaller in volume. What we know that the counties have put up an objection, and they'll be uh, this objection will be heard by this committee that will be uh, re replacing the OMB. Well, the uh, municipality is the approving entity, is it not? No, we're not talking about drainage here. But this is still in the works, is it not? Well, yes, but it has nothing to do with the drainage flow. I also had a follow-up question. I've already made a request. What is the width of the asphalt? Or, uh, not the width, but the thickness of the asphalt. I hope it's not, or the width is not 29 feet wide. If it's over and above that, if there are cars, parking on either side, you can't go by with a car and a bus side by side. Well, Mr. Mayor, this is a consideration that we need to take, we need to look at, but of course we're dealing with drainage here tonight, but what you've raised is a separate consideration, separate and apart from the drainage matter. Any other questions? Seconded? Yes. All those in favor? Carried then. Let's go on now to a license of occupation. Councillor Zant. Hold on, Mr. Mayor, and I'll get to it. Be it resolved that Council authorizes the Mayor and the Clerk to enter into a signed agreement for occupation concerning the property located at 1865 La Bonté with the property locate uh, with the owner of the property located at 1871 La Bonté questions councillor Lalonde well Mr. Mayor I took a look at the uh, documents and I can refer to another similar case if we can give them the right to sever the land for parking purposes, it should be registered on title, because if ever they get sued, the city is liable. The septic tank system is on the township property, and we never specified that the town would not be held liable if there was a problem. Of course, I have no objection that they park there, but we, that we certainly do have something in the title that states that the town not be held liable if there's an activity that is, is an accident that does occur on that property. Councillor Lalonde. Well, at that particular area, there is a major level change. The, I don't know what happened this year. Uh, the sidewalk was uh, earmarked for replacement uh, or targeted for replacement. Will this be done this year or are we going to contend with a cone smack dab in the middle of the driveway for another year? Well, I'm not aware of that situation, but I'll look into this more thoroughly. Councillor Chouinard, yes, from an engineering standpoint, especially from a civil responsibility standpoint, I'm uh, certainly that concerns me. There's no law that states that someone that makes use of somebody else's property for a certain number of years, especially if there is uh, uh, no lease st stipulating this. Mrs. Mr. Leonard, well, Mr. Mayor, I know you'll you'll have to give them permission to enter into an agreement in between the owner. Well, uh, d d d d will the agreement state that they have to come up with a proof of insurance each and every year? So that if he fails to supply proof of insurance and uh, the municipality uh, fails to be made cognizant of uh, that particular fact, then we'd be liable by default. So we have to we have to make sure that they supply proof of insurance every year. Well, Mr. Mayor, I contacted the uh, insurance representatives and they certainly stated that we needed insurance to oversee any parking activities there. 
this particular property does not have parking per se. There was a piece of that property that was uh, severed to give access to the septic system or septic tank system that was there. So that's the only parking lot or parking facility in that particular area. Well, I have no problem that it be used, but I just want that they come up with proof of insurance each and every year, and it's important that this be indicated. Councillor Lalonde, I remember that we contended with a similar case about two years ago. There was an agreement that had been signed in between owners, both owners involved, and they appeared bef before the tribunal because they had not registered that fact. It cost $20,000 to the municipality and $20,000 to the owners. They claimed $40,000, and there was a split judgment award uh, $20,000 owed by the municipality and twenty thousand dollars owed by the owners. So we'll make sure that this is being registered? Yes. Fine. All those in favor then carried. Item eleven point two appointment to a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee, Mr. Lalonde. Whereas Mrs. Vivienne Van Brinkle has uh, resigned as a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee, be it resolved that Susan Isabel Pitts uh, be appointed as a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee for the rest, for the remainder of the term left to be served. Fine. All those in favor, carried. Let's go on now with agreements for daycare services with school boards and the UCPR. Mrs. Sima, be it resolved that. Uh, Council adopt uh, bylaw 2018-142 to authorize uh, community services to enter into a signed agreement with the following school boards in the United Counties of Prescott Russell for the year 2018 and 2019 to ensure continuity regard and partnership with each school boards and the United Counties of Prescott Russell as recommended. The Eastern Ontario Catholic District School Board the Eastern Ontario Public School Board, the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario, CDSBEO, the Upper Canada District School Board, UCDSB, sorry, and the United Counties of Prescott and Russell. Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. The United Counties of Prescott and Russell, along with the school boards, who's responsible to make sure that the space allotted for daycare services be meet with the criteria set out for daycare services. Well, the Ministry of Education uh, does, because the uh, daycare services uh, is governed by the Ministry of Education. Well, we're talking about different ministries here. The Early Childhood uh, ministry? No. Well, uh, things might have changed this year. No, Ms. no, uh, Mr. Lalonde. This was modified with the implementation of the 2014 Daycare Act. I see. Yes, I recall the discussion we had with regard to the same at your school last year. We talked about uh, widening the available space for daycare services. But nothing has been done since then. And I'm just wondering, Mr. Mayor, where things are at now. Are we taking this into consideration when we know that there are agreements we have to enter into? Well, that's not part and parcel of the report that I forwarded it to you. The school board has to follow up uh, with regard to this matter. So we can ask them uh, questions as to where we're at concer with regard to this here. But let me I can guarantee you that we're still following the uh, directive set out by the uh, ministry. Well, I can tell you that we had to change washroom facilities in some uh, areas, and and I was even told that uh, they're going to they were going to modify bathroom facilities in keeping with the new directives that are issued by the government. Well, the school board has, or the uh, or respective school boards have to follow up on this. Apparently, the school boards uh, function on their own without consulting with us. Well, the same at your daycare 
center. If I talk about this situation, uh, the school buses are parked at the back there and they emit uh, carbon monoxide. And uh, Well, we have to look into that. Yes. Next item, snow removal and abrasive application contracts. Uh, Mrs. Simard, oh, be resolved that town council grant uh, snow removal and abrasive application contracts for the uh, for those selected under report LOI 201 and be resolved that town council adopt a regulation uh, 2018-140 to authorize the mayor and the clerk to enter into a signed contract with regards to snow removal and abrasive application. Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chouanier, I do have a question here. I took a look at the attached letters, and we've stated that Lantec will have one, but it's not on the list of, uh, of those potential tenderers. There's also another company or individual involved. Uh, Mrs. Chouanier, I may answer. Yes, we'll just uh, have Mr. Lelon finish his n other question. Marcel Lepage, yes, André Fillon, yes, Chris, yes. Well, normally, well, La Croix, yes, and Land Tech, uh, the, we, we do have written materials saying that they were not on the list. Could it be that some had the intent to uh, tender but did not? Well, the report indicates that this was done in two parts. Uh, this part dealing with parking that includes abrasive and snow removal and there was uh, the sidewalk exclusive section dealing with the recreational and sports complexes we have there. And the only tenderer in that particular instance was Lantec, the same tenderer, as was the case in previous years. That's why the report is broken up in two separate sections, in spite of the fact that only one came up with a tender that goes against, well, the rates that are tendered for are close to what was requested. What's the land tech cost? Because it's not reflected in the letter. Well, it's contained in the report that's before us. I it's under financial considerations. I know that 495 for snow clearing and 225, 000, 225 for abrasive application, for abrasive application. The last item and the report headed financial consideration under item 8 number 8 all right fine no problem then any other questions all those in favor I know Mr. Mayor that you declared a conflict of interest uh, so Carried then. Fine. Can we ask uh, the, Mr. Mayor to come back? Uh, yes, Mrs. Collier has gone to get him. Well, we can continue in his absence. Yeah, I have no problems with continuing in his absence. Item 11.5. Be resolved that Municipal Council adopts bylaw 2018 authorizing the mayor and the clerk to enter into a signed contract with Arnco Construction and Excavation Division 135-1150 Ontario Inc. in order to execute the drainage works for Phase 3 on Clark Road for an amount of $136,450 excluding HST. Seconded by Councillor Zant. Oh, I see. Okay. That guy. That guy. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just, why, why don't you just finish up with this one because you started up this item. If you had any comments, please don't hesitate. Uh, that's concerning the Clark Road. Any questions? 
I'm a bit disappointed uh, that phase four is the problem area. That's where people get stuck. We're not fix fixing that right away. Fine, but otherwise, what are we going to do in the meantime? Mr. Mayor, uh, that part that we're performing work on, uh, well, everything flows in that direction, you see. Yes, I understand that. So we have to work on that particular side, and we have to correct the north by part. But the part up on top where they got stuck, well, fine, you know. Uh, there's uh, Winter is at our doorstep, and things are going to freeze up, but when it thaws out the next spring, it might be a problem. Yes. I understand. We'll certainly uh, do some work there prior to the next spring thaw. Can we not perform some digging work up on top? Because you noted, noticed that water was ponding to such an extent that it was at the same height as the street level. At the level of the street, you see. Well, it's hard to ensure positive drainage in that area, Mr. Mayor we have to go against the grade of the slope itself to perform or to do what needs to be done. I see. So, so we cannot do otherwise. I understand, but it's unfortunate because those people living further up have difficulty in going through there. But the fact that we'll be entering into phase three of their works, won't that alleviate the problem? No, because drainage will drainage works won't be done up on top. I remember that we had similar problem with Marcel Road at the bottom of that particular hill. They performed work at the bottom of the hill and that alleviated problems at the top of the hill. Well, I won't be at the council table at the next term and uh, hopefully, well, that puts pressure on the next town councillor that will, uh, well, uh, apparently uh, it blocks up things. I might add uh, the following. Do we have an idea as to how much it's going to cost? The equipment is there. If we're waiting for next year, I'll recall what the residents told us, and I understood that people that appeared in front of town council. Could we not at least start up just a part of phase four to alleviate the drainage problems? Well, Mr. Mayor, if we enter into any type of work concerning phase four, it's going to cost us at least $250,000 to start up whatever work needs to be started up. So the 500 meters proposed to be worked on, given the budget that was a uh, set aside for that purpose does not allow us to extend any work that is currently being performed over and beyond what has been done to extend the the extent if you wish of the work well as as long as it's done during this coming spring that's fine yes I believe it was uh, delayed in to March or April, I believe. It's unfortunate that we did not do anything two months ago. Well, that's right. We're in a lame, but unfortunately, we're in a lame duck uh, situation. We have to respect the budget as the budget stands right now. But of course, we can uh, certainly move fast in establishing this as a priority next time around. So, who's in favor? Fine. Carried unanimously, then. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor Chouignard. You replaced me because I had a conflict of interest during the previous uh, uh, point. 11.6. Be resolved that Council uh, approve that the Chief Administrative Officer submit the information to Council for consideration, whereas the, an underground conduit was located at that location where the Bourget Fire Station was located at, be it resolved that the Chief Administrative Officer be delegated the authority to spend $40,000 to 
counter any unforeseen expenditures because of this and be it resolved that uh, this delegation of authority to spend $40,000 be restricted to that particular limit for any other difficulties of that particular nature. I would like to know if if Mrs. Collier or Mr. Leonard can help us out with that, why this was discovered at the very last moment like this. Well, Mr. Mayor, there are certain pipes that are either abandoned or not properly recognized or divided up, especially for drainage purposes. There were some things that had been done in the past where it had not it had been covered up but not properly unearthed or uncovered later on when it needed to. Now we in 2014 we proceeded to a, a mapping of existing facilities but this piping was not mapped. I, I imagine that uh, you do have some uh, depth uh, detection equipment that you were working with. How come we missed that particular pipe? Was it abandoned? Well, this particular pipe is not used anymore. I believe that uh, when we discovered it, we could not determine whether it was still being used or not because of the excavation work that we were or due to the excavation work that we were performing this is a pipe that had been converted at that time a few years back and there's, there was something that there was nothing that we had uh, that we, we could do why not just cover it up or just tear it out why if we are not to use it why can't we just tear it out is there a camera that we could put in to determine whether this can be done? Well, we could. If we just cover it up, what's the problem? You can't just cover up a pipe. Well, if it's abandoned, you'd have to pour cement in there to stop it up or block it up. But uh, Mrs. Collier would have to give me a directive to this effect. Let's not forget that this was uncovered at the the very very recently well I assume that we do Mr. Mayor though I understand what you're saying that we do have some depth uh, perception percep or is it call your engineering the one that we allotted to the contract to they they performed uh, s some work that needed to be performed and they uncovered uh, a pipe there well Mr. Leonard well Mr. Mayor there, uh, you know, when we uncover some piping, or the, when we encounter difficulties with regards to piping, uh, there might be a gas line close by or something similar. But in this case, no. It was part and parcel of a of a uh, of a sanitary sewer system. In this particular case, this is not something that's part of a recognized system per se. So I assume it won't cost $40,000 to have this repaired. No. So you're asking council to authorize further expenditures and you don't want to go revisit council to obtain permission to continue on with the work that needs to be done each and every time you uncover some small discrepancies or small difficulties like that. It's, you're solely asking for discretion concerning construction related issues yes we're, we're, we're talking about $5,500 to repair the situation Councillor Chouinier could this be a pipe that allowed tractors to cross, cross from one field to another it might be a shorter length of pipe than we're thinking of well I can't say what the exact length of pipe that we're contending with is with regard to the Bourget venue, but we're talking here about working with open ditches, and at that point of time, uh, there was uh, piping located in a rural area. Our storm sewer system might have been connected to this, but uh, there are some abutting properties that are drained. Uh, 
making use of that particular facility right now. I said, but we have to make sure that this particular pipe we uncovered is part and parcel of a sanitary sewer system that we're making use of, Mrs. Collier. Well, and also the forty thousand dollar discretionary expenditure that you're allowing us to make use of, that also deals with the Bouget and uh, Clarence Creek project. Can I add the following? It's nice to be able to tap into a $40,000 discretionary fund, but it, uh, I would ask you to send us uh, an email to make us aware of what's going on. Councillor Lalonde? Uh, wh where does this pipe drain onto? The side of the road? Well, as I'm trying to explain to all of you, it's an open ditch that was buried later, buried up later. I'm not aware exactly of the diameter of that particular pipe. I imagine we're talking about 460 millimeters, which is the ad identified standard. Well, there is water seeping into that area, yes, and there are some homes and sump pump that are connected to this pipe. Don't forget that we uncovered this pipe this afternoon. Well, it seemed that we were only left the other time around with $34,000 worth of contingency fees. No, that's tacked on to another budget. Oh, I see, the other $300,000 still left, but I'm convinced that we're not we don't have $40,000 to play with. Well, is everybody in favor in any event? Fine, then. Let's go on. Let's go on now to bylaws. Councillor Grimaud, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the following bylaws be adopted. Item 12.1, 2018-138, lifting a par of part lot control, space builder Solora, 12.2, 2018-139, Dedication of Public Highway, Belvedere Road, Part 3, Plan 50R-10708, 12.3, 2018-144, Award a Contract to Stone Share Incorporated for the Implementation of a SharePoint Document and Records Management Intranet, and Item 12.4, Bylaw 2018-145, Award of a Contract with Two, Atrel Engineering Limited for the design and engineering services for the Verdun subdivision file. I forgot to ask if you wanted to set one aside for further discussion. Yes, 12.3, Mr. Mayor. So let's deal with 12.1, 0.2, and 0.4. Yes, all, Mr. Zant, all those in favor? Go ahead. Councillor Lalonde. Twelve. Point three, two thousand and eighteen. Uh, do you want me to read uh, the whereas? Eleven of the Municipal Act, two thousand and one. That's the one, one forty-five, one forty-four. You alluded to twelve point three, item twelve point three, two thousand eighteen dash one forty-four. So we're just asking him to read the resolution. Be resolved that the committee of the whole receive the appropriate report of that council, adopt 2018-144 uh, to authorize the clerk and the mayor to award a contract to Stone Share Incorporate for the implementation of a SharePoint document and records management intranet as reflected in uh, document F2018-ADN-18 for an amount of $171,400 excluding HST. Your question, Mr. Lenonde, is what? I'd just like to obtain further clarification because the last time I asked a similar question, that it, it is stated that all submissions and proposals are to be in English only. By the bridge assert that are not entirely in English language may be disqualified. Why is that? That's not clear, Mr. Mayor. The assessment committee, Mr. Mayor, that awarded the contract that assessed uh, those proposals that we did receive uh, uh, was made up of uh, English-speaking 
assessment officers or assessors so that we could it didn't prevent us to convert those into French. I think that it's this is the way it's written out. You know, they wanted to make sure that all those tenderers included the English language in their tenders. But it does state not entirely in the English language may be disqualified. Yes. Yes. We have to make sure that it's completely in English. It can be translated into French afterwards, but it has to be uh, made up in English so that uh, some parties would uh, be able to read all of the relevant documentation. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, did we seek out experts in this particular matter, technical experts that were able to assess the technical requirements? Well, Mr. Mayor, we're officially declared as a bilingual city, and we might be called upon to answer questions to the effect that, well, how come you're accepting something that might disqualify someone else from making the same request? Well, we can disqualify them. They can come up with an English presentation, but they can ask that this presentation be made in French. But it does state here, may be disqualified, but it has to be at least totally made up in English. Nothing prevents them to come up with a French and English version. There aren't all that many software programs entirely in French. SharePoint is an English computer program. I understand Mr. Lalonde's point. I just wanted to make sure, we just want to make sure there's no practice discrimination here, or discrimination that is practiced here with regard involving one language or another. Fine. Let's go on to the confirmatory bylaw. Be it resolved that bylaw 2018 146 be deemed a confirmatory bylaw for all of bylaws adopted at the regular meeting of the 10th of October 2018. Seconded by Councillor Chouinier. All those in favor? Carried then. Thank you. I call the meeting closed at 8 07 p.m.